Hey guys, my name is Liz. I am a full-time self-employed metalsmith, and this is a series on my channel called Heavy Metal, where I combine my two favorite things, metalsmithing and true crime. So before I get into today's case, I just want to say thank you to all of my friends on Facebook and like my followers on Instagram who shared my last video and like left me really nice encouraging comments. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys. That was really sweet. Thank you guys for watching. If you have haven't subscribed maybe throw me a subscribe and a like I think it would help boost my video and get it out to more people so today I'm gonna be doing the same thing as I did last time I'm gonna be making a piece of jewelry and I'm gonna be talking about a really bizarre case today I'm gonna be using this little giraffe turquoise and I'm gonna be making a spinner pendant, which is one of my kind of like original pieces. It's really good for mindfulness, um, for stress and anxiety relief. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a close up of the piece and I'll let you know where you can purchase it and everything. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's case because it is another pretty crazy one. Today I'm gonna to be telling you about the unsolved disappearance of Michaela Bali, a teenage girl who went to school one day and was never seen by any of her loved ones again. So Michaela was 16 years old when she went missing on April 12th, 2016 from Yorkton, Saskatchewan in Canada. She was a really beautiful young lady. She had blonde hair and blue eyes. But of course, as we all know, kids can be assholes. And she was often bullied for her acne, so she was really self-conscious about it. This made her pretty shy, but she was also known as like a pretty popular girl. She had a lot of friends and her friends said that she was a great friend and that she was really fun to be around. So because of her insecurities, she spent a lot of time online making online friends on different apps like Kick and Instagram and Snapchat and she used many different aliases. Michaela's mom said that she was an easy child to parent because she was not adventurous, but it seems like Michaela's mom might not have known her quite as well as she thought she did. Speaking of Michaela's family, she lived with her mom, her disabled aunt, her grandma, and her two siblings, a brother and a sister. Michaela did not know her dad, um, she didn't even know his name, and she wasn't allowed to meet him. It's believed, but never confirmed by her mom, Paula, that her dad was a man named Rick. Rick had apparently tried to have a relationship with Michaela, but Paula would never allow him to because he didn't go to church. So according to her family, the morning of the day that she went missing was very normal. The only thing that anybody noticed that seemed weird was Michaela's friend, Oksana, got a text from Michaela around 6.40 in the morning um, asking her if she could take her to the bank. And Oksana was like, um, no. <laughs> for one thing, it's hella early. And for another thing, the bank doesn't open till nine and we'll already be at school and I don't wanna miss school. So apparently Michaela seemed a little bit annoyed by this and she told her that she had $5,000 in her bank account, which investigators would say, later is very far from the truth. She had much less than $5,000 in her bank account. She actually had also made three calls to her bank the night before, and during one of those calls ended up transferring $25 from savings to checking. That evening, she also texted three of her friends. She texted her friend Amy and said that she needed help, but when Amy asked what she needed help for, Michaela never responded. She also texted her friend Shelby, and said something about a boy and that she was super upset and crying but didn't go into any detail or say who she was upset about. And then lastly, she texted her ex-boyfriend and she told him that she was super unhappy and that she wanted to go spend some time in Regina, which is a city about two hours away from Yorkton. But back to the morning of the day that she went missing, like I said, her mom said that she was acting totally normal. She was doing her makeup and listening to music in the bathroom with her mom like she did every single morning. Nothing seemed off at all. Her grandma took her to school every day. So around 8.10, her grandma dropped her off at her school, which was called Sacred Heart High, and it was a Catholic school. And she confirmed with her that she would be picking her up after school to take her to her violin lesson. At 8.22 a.m., Michaela is seen on surveillance at her school putting things into her locker. 
And as soon as she is done putting stuff in her locker, she makes a beeline for the back door and she leaves school. She doesn't tell anybody where she's going. She just takes off. Apparently her ex-boyfriend did text her because they were in the same first period class. He asked her where she was and she told him she was on the other side of town, which wasn't true. She had literally just left the school. At 8.51 AM, she is seen again on surveillance footage outside of the TD bank. They were not open yet, so she was standing outside talking on her cell phone. And as soon as they opened, she walked up to the teller and asked if she could withdraw $55. After withdrawing the money, she walked back outside and stood in front of the bank for a little while longer, continuing to talk on her cell phone. Later on, the police would check her phone records and weirdly, there were zero calls showing up on her phone records from that day at all. So what they concluded is that she was making calls through one of the apps that she was using, whether it be Kick or Facebook or whatever. And whether she was doing this purposefully or not, doing this made the identity of who she was speaking to basically untraceable. So after leaving the bank, she entered a store called Terry's Pawn Shop. And the employee recalled that she was in there trying to pawn a silver ring. He said that silver wasn't valuable enough to make her an offer, which, okay, rude. <laughs> but he says that she was very polite when he declined to make her an offer and she just left. She didn't seem like she was in any kind of distress or anything. At 9, 10 a.m., Michaela is seen yet again on a surveillance camera entering a combination Tim Hortons and Wendy's. She buys herself a coffee and then she sits down at a booth. You can see on the surveillance footage that she has a big backpack with her and it looks to be pretty stuffed. And that might not seem odd to a lot of people cause like, okay, yeah, she was going to school. But when her friends saw this, that was a huge red flag for them because they were like, oh no, Michaela does not take a book bag to school. She only ever carries a purse. So the idea that she would have a big full backpack was very weird to them and they thought that that meant she was planning on going somewhere. So Michaela hangs out at that booth in the Tim Hortons for about 13 minutes. Um, she's on and off her phone that whole time texting and calling people and then after 13 minutes she's seen getting up and walking out the door and then weirdly she comes right back in the same door walks through the restaurant and then is seen just immediately leaving out of a different door. The next time she's seen on surveillance footage, she's behind a store called the Giant Tiger, and she's heading back toward the Tim Hortons. And then she enters the Tim Hortons again at 9.49 a.m., and at this time she sits at a different booth, one that's closer to the windows, so she has a better view outside. At 10.12 a.m., Michaela texts her friend Shelby, and she says, hey, I need help. Unfortunately, Shelby had left her phone at home that day, so she never responded. And a few minutes later, Michaela actually texted her back and said, never mind, I figured it out. Michaela is seen talking on her phone six times over the next 30 minutes. She then gets up and leaves the Tim Hortons again, and then she walks right back in and sits at the same booth. Again, she's talking on the phone. She starts looking around, and then she immediately hangs up and gets up and goes and sits with an older lady at a table. That lady was later tracked down and she told investigators that Michaela just randomly, like she didn't know Michaela, Michaela just came up to her and asked her if she could help her rent a hotel room. And obviously the lady was like, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that for you, child. She said that Michaela wasn't like super upset. She was very polite. She thanked her and she just got up went back over to her booth and then called someone on her phone and then she did actually leave the Tim Hortons for good this time. She's not seen on surveillance footage again for about an hour, um, but then she is seen entering her school around noon. While she was in there, she saw two of her friends and she told them that she was just about to go get on a bus to go to Regina for vacation. The two girls noted that it looked like she had two phones, which they had never known her to have two phones before. So that was kind of weird to them. And then after speaking to them, she immediately left the school again. Nobody really knows why she was there, why she went all the way back to her school just for a couple minutes. But after the security cameras at her school catch her leaving, that's the last time she's ever really caught on surveillance. 
An employee at the local bus depot does remember to speaking to Michaela. He said that she came in and asked what time the next bus would be leaving for Regina. He told her that that would be at about 5 p.m. and she did not buy a ticket. Instead, she went over to a restaurant that was within the bus depot, ordered some poutine for lunch, and sat down for a while. She then, according to witness statements, left the bus depot around 1.40 p.m., and she was never seen again after that. People said that they had seen her leave with a big man that had like a big cross tattoo with flames on his arm. I'll put up a picture of the drawing that they did of it. For a long time, they couldn't find this guy and they really thought that he probably had something to do with this. But eventually this man did end up coming forward and he was like, I am not involved with this. I was just holding the door open for this girl and they were able to rule him out as a suspect at all. So when Michaela's grandma went to pick her up later that day from school, she obviously was not standing where she normally stands and grandma waited for a bit. She got pretty worried, so she went inside the school to see if she could find her. And when she went in the school, she talked to some of Michaela's teachers and friends and they told her that they hadn't seen Michaela since way earlier that morning and that she had never shown up to classes that day. So her grandma got super nervous and drove straight over to Michaela's mom's work. Michaela's mom was like, okay, let's try not to freak out. She was super excited about her violin lessons, so maybe she got a ride over there and went early and like forgot to tell us. So they drove over to where Michaela did her violin lessons, and when she wasn't there either, that's when they got really worried and they were like, okay, where the hell is this girl? They were calling and texting her nonstop and she was not answering any of their calls or texts. Michaela's mom also kept like an emergency stash of cash in their house and Michaela knew where that was and her mom knew that if she was gonna run off, she would have taken some of that cash. So they went home and her mom noticed that Michaela did not take a single dime and she also hadn't taken her phone charger, her acne medication, which she was religious about taking because she was, you know, so insecure about her acne. And she also hadn't taken her makeup, which also was very important to her because of her acne. So they found all of this to be really, really worrying and they went ahead and reported her to police as missing. So the first thing police did was interview Michaela's friends, Shelby and Oksana. They were like her best friends. And they did remember Shelby talking about how she really wanted to get out of Yorkton. She wanted to go to like Saskatoon or Regina or Moose Jaw or Prince Albert, but they thought that that was just normal. Like they also didn't wanna be stuck in a small town. They all craved like living in a bigger city. So they didn't think that that was concerning necessarily. One of Michaela's teachers also noticed that the day before she had been like really, really moody and sad, but she couldn't be sure if she was just moody and sad because she was a teenager or if there was something actually going on with her. Shelby also said that in the days leading up to Michaela's disappearance, she had talked about a boy named Josh and Shelby had no idea who Josh was. And when she asked Michaela who Josh was, Michaela wouldn't really give her any details. Michaela had also talked to a friend named Amy about a different boy named Christopher. And she said that Christopher was gonna come to Saskatchewan to visit her. This was worrying to investigators because this just showed that Michaela was willing to talk to strangers online and agree to meet up with them. It also seemed like she was very secretive about her online presence, even with her best friends. There have never been any confirmed sightings of Michaela since she left the bus depot on April 12th, 2016, but her friends and family did get a little glimmer of hope about three months later. So her friend Shelby had sent her a couple Snapchats on the day that she went missing. And three months later, someone had opened those Snapchats. She tried to send her some more to see if those would also be opened, and they never were. There's also an Instagram account under Michaela's name, and it has a lot of followers, but no pictures, which leads investigators to think that this was her main account, but she deleted all of the pictures off of it for some reason. And the eerie thing about this account is there's nothing on it, no pictures, but the bio just says one word, goodbye. It took investigators 10 months to get a hold of Michaela's social media information. Because of like privacy law differences between the United States and Canada, which I think is absolutely fucking stupid, <laughs> but I haven't heard that them getting into these accounts gave them any big leads. I don't know if 
if on these accounts they just like there's no possible way to look back and see who she was talking to on the phone they did also check local hotels to see if anybody remembered seeing her and that turned up with nothing they also um, checked a lake near her high school and that also turned up nothing they of course wanted to look into the two guys that her friends had mentioned, Josh and Christopher. They never got a confirmation on the Josh guy. They didn't have a last name for him. Ended up assuming that it was this guy that she went to church with. And when they talked to him, he said that he hadn't spoken to Michaela in three years. So he was ruled out as a suspect. They were able to track down this Christopher fella. Um, and he actually lives in North Carolina. He wouldn't give up a lot of information about the conversations that he and Michaela had, which was kind of weird. He said that they were like very personal. And he did say though that Michaela had been suicidal and that she had been self-harming and that he was really trying to get her away from self-harm and to have her focus on God. Christopher was ruled out because there was no evidence that he was in Canada or anywhere near Canada at the time of Michaela's disappearance. So that's really it for the case. Um, now let's go ahead and move on to the theories. So the police theorized that maybe she could have been running away to try to meet her dad. However, the man that everyone thinks is her dad, Rick, he's been super cooperative and they don't believe that he was involved in any way. A lot of people, Michaela's mom included, think that she was a victim of sex trafficking and that she was tricked by some scumbag that she had met on the internet. Since she didn't have very much money and she didn't take her meds, her makeup, her charger, or anything, a lot of people think that she wasn't planning on being gone for very long, like maybe just the day or just overnight. Unless, however, she was planning on having $5,000 in her account like she told Oksana. Maybe some person on the internet told her that they were gonna transfer her $5,000 and that's why she was calling the bank so many times and was so so adamant that she needed to go to the bank super early in the morning. So Danielle Hallen is one of my favorite true crime peeps on YouTube. And if you like to watch true crime on YouTube, I'm sure you know who she is. She covered this case as well. And she had a really interesting theory that I haven't seen mentioned anywhere else. So she thinks that someone from Regina came and picked Michaela up from the bus station. And her reasoning makes a lot of sense. Regina is just about two hours from Yorkton. Ah! And Michaela had gotten to the bus depot around noon and she was seen leaving at about 1.45. So she sat there and waited for two hours. Danielle's theory is that maybe she was supposed to take a bus to Regina, but when she found out that there wasn't one until 5 p.m., whoever she had been talking to on the phone this time was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna come get you, hang tight, get yourself some poutine, I'll be there in two hours. Another theory is that she just simply wanted to run away and that she did completely willingly and that she's still alive and well somewhere that she just started a new life. The Panadian, well, the Panadian, the, can <laughs> the Panadian. The Canadian police have reason to believe that she might be in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not exactly sure why, but I read this on like a Canadian news article. People are quick to dismiss this because she didn't take her charger and her makeup, but I don't know. I mean, kids are obsessed with their phones, obviously. She might have had another charger in her locker or in her bag. Um, and then the makeup thing, like her mom specifically said that they were doing their makeup together in the morning. So it might have just been like way too suspicious if she grabbed her makeup bag and put it in her, her uh, backpack. Her mom would have been like, why are you taking that to school? So maybe she was just like, fuck it, I guess I'm gonna get new makeup when I get to Regina with my $5,000. Personally, I think she was groomed by some old scummy man on the internet um, who probably told her that he was a lot younger and more successful than he actually was. He probably offered her $5,000 to come start a new life with him in Regina and forget about all of her problems. He probably instructed her to ask somebody to book a hotel for them so that his name wouldn't be associated with it and made her call him over kick so that he couldn't be tracked. He was probably very smart, but also she was a very insecure 
teenage girl and was probably really easy to manipulate. She had a lot of self-esteem issues, so he probably was able to easily make her feel special and gain her trust. So there is actually a man seen on the CCTV footage at Tim Hortons when Michaela is sitting in the first booth, who is pretty creepy. Um, so he walks past her and then he turns around and looks right at her. And when he spots her, he turns to these random, seemingly random guys at a table and he looks like he's just making small talk with them, like maybe asking them for directions or something. People actually freak out over this guy on the internet. They really think that he had something to do with it. It does seem creepy, but I don't know if I believe that there's anything going on there just because his face is very clearly visible on this footage and it's been like four, wow, five years since she disappeared almost. I've never heard anything about this guy. So I think that police probably have tracked him down and ruled him out, but who knows? So there's a $50,000 reward for any information that leads to the safe return of Michaela. Her family is really destroyed without her. Um, apparently they can't sit at the dining room table and eat anymore because it just doesn't feel right without her there. Michaela's friends miss her like crazy too. Um, at their high school graduation, they actually wanted to leave a seat open for her and they were told they weren't allowed because there wasn't enough room. Like, okay, <laughs> that seems so shitty to me. Like, you really couldn't find one extra chair for these poor grieving girls. Okay, so yet again, I had camera issues last night. It's the next day. Um, unfortunately though, that's really all the information that is out there about Michaela's case. I really hope that she's alive out there somewhere living a happy life. I hope that someday there will be a break in her case and her friends and family can have some peace of mind because I know that they're just really lost without her. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you guys think because I'm super interested to read what your theories are. I am really torn on this one. Part of me thinks that she really had a plan that day and who knows, maybe she really did run off willingly and is doing fine. Unfortunately, I do think that the wrong person got a hold of her and that she was abducted. I look forward to reading what you guys think about this one. So the piece that I made while telling this story, like I said, is one of my spinner pendants. I'll put a closer video, but see, it just kind of spins like that. This guy's actually not available yet. I am working on a set. I have 10 of these beautiful little giraffe turquoise stones, and I'm gonna be working on 10 of these spinners, all in like different variations. But if you're interested in seeing when these are gonna drop in my shop, I'm not sure at the moment when they will, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Metal. I'll have it linked below. Definitely subscribe if you wanna see some more because I have more that are already in the works. I'm having a good time researching these. This kind of stuff is so interesting to me as I know it is for a lot of people. So if you would like to see more, then subscribe. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.